The world's most famous atheist changes his tune. Richard Dawkins calls himself a cultural Christian. Jeffrey Sachs blasts the Biden administration for its immoral proxy war against Russia. And Candace Owens strikes again, this time upholding the Catholic position against contraception. What is happening is satanic worldwide, right? What's going on here? Why is just about everyone sounding more Catholic than the Pope? Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Matt. This is Remnant Underground. Happy octave of Easter to you all. And thank you, special thanks to everyone for a tremendous outpouring of support and sharing of last week's rather controversial underground on the social reign of Christ the King in the, uh, the Candace Owens controversy. I really was amazed by, first of all, by the overwhelmingly positive reaction to that, but also so many of you talked about the fact that you had never heard of this. You had never learned anything about the doctrine on the social kingship. And this came as, 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 as new information. And so I was reminded by that, that we really do have an obligation to factor that in. And I don't want to say that anybody in this audience is ignorant, but in a sense, this whole revolution has been premised on dumbing down the Catholic world as to what it is that we actually believe. And that's how the revolution uh, actually worked. So, and I think I fault myself because we have to keep in mind now, on the one hand, it's a great thing that literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people have become aware of the revolution in the Catholic Church, have joined this traditional Latin mass movement. They're trying to figure out what it's all about. And I think those of us who have been in it for the, a long time ha have sort of uh, been remiss in a way in not taking into account that you just didn't know. You, you, weren't, you weren't instructed, you weren't taught, you weren't catechized on these things. And yet these things are foundational. The social reign of Christ the King, as I said last week, this was, this was the animating thing behind everything that Michael Davies did and my father did and Archbishop Lefebvre did and all the pioneer traditional Catholics. First, it was the proclamation of the kingship of Christ, and then it was a warning that in attacking the traditional Latin mass, the touchstone of the faith, the process of uncrowning Christ the King was in full swing. So you really have to, we really have to talk more about this. Um, if we understand, if we're going to understand, we're going to put together some semblance of an actual army of God to fight and restore all things in Christ. So to that end, we've made a couple decisions. Uh, to take this up to the next level. In fact, we're going to talk about Candace Owens. We're going to talk about the kingship of Christ. We're also going to talk about, believe it or not, something that Candace Owens has brought back to the forum this week, and that is contraception. And it's absolutely incredible to think about that after the church's constant teaching on some of these things, the moral questions such as contraception, you no longer can turn to the Pope or to the bishops or to most priests to say anything about these issues, very serious issues that have to do with the destruction of society and the family and life. You can't rely on the church anymore. And so you have people like Candace Owens, who I like to think will one day be a Catholic, but she certainly isn't a Catholic now, her husband is a Catholic, coming out there and reminding the world of what the Pope and the bishops should be talking about, but they no longer are. So really, in talking about people like some of these influencers, like Candace Owens, who obviously is coming awake, um, it really is an indictment of what's happening to the church. And it's also, on the positive side, it's an indicator that God's grace is still at work. So I really want to spend a few minutes talking about that tonight. And I'm also, to that end, really excited to announce that because of this, because of this reality where we're looking around going, oh my gosh, where's the church? What we did, what we decided to do, we've, we've, we've come up with a theme now for this year's Catholic Identity Conference in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's going to happen at the end of September. The theme is going to be, and again, because it's not being talked about in the church, the theme for this conference, which usually attracts about 800 people, you know, thousands of, of live streamers, the theme is going to be, And He Shall Reign, Restoring All Things in Christ the King. That's how important this is, in my opinion, to go back to basics, to re-educate this Catholic counter-revolution so we can effectively stand against what's happening, not only to the church, but to the whole world right now. 
And first, a bit of shop talk that has to do with another aspect of what we're trying to do here at remnant-tv.com. We actually have a channel now. I think I've talked about it a couple times, but I want you to be aware of it. Uh, it's called Too Hot for Big Tech, and it has videos that we know will not last five minutes on YouTube, but are, are very important. They're also mostly videos that we ourselves did not produce. So last week we did the video on the World Health Organization's Pandemic Preparedness Treaty. This isn't, by the way, folks, just about pandemics. This is about anything that Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Chinese communist proxy, who runs the World Health Organization, decides is a, quote, public health emergency of international concern. Congressman Smith, who I admire tremendously, talked passionately about abortion being a public health emergency of international concern, according to the World Health Organization. What is so worrying about this? Wherever you come down on abortion is that they're not only able to declare it that, they're able to dictate what must be done about it. This week, we've got a video called Climate the Movie, The Real Truth. I can't recommend this highly enough. And some of you are going to be scandalized by this. Here's why. Like Expelled, which is that great Ben Stein 2008 documentary on intelligent design, which was not produced by Catholics, it was produced by, by scientists, by academics uh, in, in defense of intelligent design. This, this one on climate change is made by the same sort of top flight scientists who have a lot to lose from speaking out. And that's why I think it's so relevant. So they're not traditional Catholics, they're not fundamentalist uh, you know, Christians without a whole lot to lose, <laughs> quite frankly. And in fact, I would disagree with a number of the scientists who are presented in this video on the question of evolution and the old earth and so forth. But that's why this documentary has made it to our Too Hot for Big Tech uh, channel, because it is so devastating to think that it's coming from the scientific community now. If CO2 isn't having the huge negative impacts that we claimed it was having originally, how are we going to stay in business? A lot of people's livelihoods depend on it. They're not gonna give that up. This is a story of the corruption of science. There's no such thing as a climate emergency happening on this planet now. It's, there's no, no evidence of one. The climate alarm is nonsense, you know, it's, it's a hoax. I've never liked hoax. I, I think scam is a better word, but I'm willing to live with hoax. It's a story about the bullying and intimidation of anyone who dares to challenge the climate alarm. To speak up against or about climate change in any sort of skeptical way was essentially career suicide. Activists are even calling for any skepticism to be criminalized. It's the story of an assault on individual freedom. It's a wonderful way to uh, increase government power. If there's an existential threat out there that's worldwide, well, you need a powerful worldwide government, you know, to cope with it. We see all these kind of uh, authoritarian measures being adopted in the name of saving the planet. You've suddenly got the population under control all over the world. And climate change is the thing with the blessing of Pope Francis that they're going to use to lock down the world again. So I really want to recommend that you would click on the link below and share this very important documentary on the climate change hoax. Also tonight, um, the Remnant Tours. We've got some news from Remnant Tours. As you know, our pilgrimage to, to, to the Vendée region in France, in Western France, that sold out, thanks be to God, months ago. Uh, so that is closed, but we are organizing now at least two, maybe three additional chapters on this year's pilgrimage, the Pentecost pilgrimage from Paris to Chartres. I'm, I'm sure most in this audience know what I'm referring to there. It's a 70 mile, three day, two night walking pilgrimage across France where 20,000 people, mostly young people, have the opportunity to meet, to unite the clans, to network and so forth, to pray, to strengthen themselves in the faith, and it costs 50 euros. My name is Philippe Christori, I'm the Bishop of Chartres. He's a French traditionalist. But they are not here to discuss Vatican II. They are not here to push a political agenda. They are here to reclaim their Catholic heritage. 
conviction is really important. The faith, Catholic faith. The faith of their fathers. Offering up sacrifice to God and trying to just give everything I can. So see the link down here below and, and join me in France in May if you'd like to on the Pentecost pilgrimage from Paris to Chartres. Three days, two nights, walking pilgrimage, which culminates, friends, and this is just so exciting and should be for every one of us, whether you can be present or not, culminates at the Cathedral of Notre Dame de Chartres, where Cardinal Gerhard Muller will be offering the most high-profile traditional Latin Mass of 2024 for over 20,000 young pilgrims. You see, you can't undo this. You can't reel it in, you can't cancel it. Once this happens, it changes, it influences an entire generation of young Catholics. That's why it's so important, whether you can be there or not, that's why it's so important. Also, and this is for those of you who just have a desire to, to take part in this, this is free, absolutely free, on our website, which is sharppilgrimageusa.com, We've got a link for, to what's called the Guardian Angels chapter. Now, this is set up by our French allies, uh, and it's all about trying to bring as many people spiritually as possible to take part in this incredibly important event, this uniting of the clans, this strengthening of the faith. Anybody who wants to follow along now in spirit, day to day, the meditations, the, the patron saints, the readings, the singing, the praying, the masses can do so virtually, can do so by signing up for this Guardian Angels chapter. So please check that out, there's a link down below, and be with us one way or, or the other in this massive display of Catholic uh, restoration that's taking place uh, in France every year. This will be the 32nd time, I'm getting really old, 32nd time that I myself have organized the U.S. chapter of Our Lady of Guadalupe, it's a very interesting connection, uh, Empress of the Americans, uh, on this Chartres pilgrimage, and this is going to be the largest one ever. It's just expected to be huge. They've already, they're already seeing numbers like they've not seen before. So. Thank you very much, Francis, for being one of the greatest recruiters traditional Catholicism uh, could ever have prayed for. And by the way, whenever and wherever, anywhere that anyone tells you that Unite the Clans is just a joke, Michael Metz, Pollyanna hot flash, never gonna happen, impossible, unrealistic, anytime you hear this, please remind them to check out the Pentecost pilgrimage in France where 20,000 will unite in honor of Christ the King and the Sacred Heart of Jesus on Pentecost this year, 2024. This is gonna be big, um, and I think the reason these events are getting bigger all the time is because there is, in the world today, a sea change going on. And I really wanna kinda of talk about that just for a little bit tonight. There's a, there's a sea change, we talk about it, people hope for it, but I think sometimes people are skeptical, like it's just getting worse all the time, it's not getting better. Well, let's look at a few examples of how things are actually changing and getting better, how there actually is a mass Christian awakening going on in the world right now that we need to pray for and we need to support it with everything that we've got. So I'll give you an example, kind of a fun one. Last year at the Catholic Identity Conference, I had the honor of interviewing Gerhard Cardinal Muller. Now, he's going to be the celebrant at the Sharp Pilgrims, as I've just said, the traditional Latin Mass at the Sharp Cathedral this year. He is the one who famously said the Synod on Synodality represents a hostile takeover of the Catholic Church. He's really on fire. Well, last week, guess who Tucker Carlson interviewed? What do you think the West, that is Europe and the United States, will look like 100 years from now? No, this, I'm not a prophet in this sense. I cannot say what will be the future, but uh, we can say God gave us enough reason and intellect to do in this moment the best that we can do and looking with great responsibility uh, for a better future of the coming uh, generations. And I think uh, only with a renewal of a Christian under standing which is our culture without christianity the west is nothing 
These are monumental things that are happening, friends. These are not small things. And it, 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 not only do they encourage us personally, but they, they give teeth to the movement. People see this in the Vatican and in the, in, in the swamp, that this is happening, that there's kind of this coming together of people in politics and in church who are looking at the situation with this whole burgeoning new world order, and they're saying, we need to get together and we need to fight. And I, surely the, the Pope is a moral authority all over the world, and he has some meetings with this so-called elite or the politicians, the leaders of the state. But I think it's more important to admonish them. Uh, and I think uh, it's not so good to give these people uh, the impression they could uh, use and abuse the papal authority for their uh, ideas, so-called New World Order and the Agenda 2030. So let's talk a little bit about how we can continue this momentum, because it's powerful right now. It's very powerful. One of the few critics that I noticed from last week's show on the Candace Owens controversy uh, gently chastised me. Don't be fooled, Michael Matt. Oh boy, Candace Owens, man. She is controlled opposition. She is not one of us. Don't be an idiot. So let's just cut to the chase, friends. I understand the concept of controlled opposition, but it doesn't make any sense to apply that to, to everybody who's waking up in the middle of a maelstrom, in the middle of the worst revolution in the church and in the world that mankind has ever seen. There are going to be a lot of people waking up, and we can't just dismiss them all as controlled opposition. I see what you don't see. Do you see? we got to be smart. So let's see if we can figure that out. Let me offer a, I call it maybe a helpful little tip that might keep a few good folks from getting lost in the fever swamps. Because there is, and everybody will agree to this, there is an increasing sense of unease in all walks of life with the way that things are going in the world right now. And this is prompting many people to question the brave new world. Everything is going on. So we see that people like Bill Maher, liberals, people on the left, even they're kind of going, gee, what's going on, right? Now, some of these people I would characterize as cowards, just straight up cowards. A guy like Richard Dawkins, the world's most famous atheist, he comes to mind in the coward category. You see, because old Dick Dawkins is getting a little older. He's looking around his own country now, and he doesn't recognize it anymore. Why? Because Christianity has been destroyed. <laughs> So he doesn't recognize it. He's starting to feel afraid. He's starting to feel vulnerable, Mr. Old Atheist. Okay? Where's Christianity? And suddenly, well, wouldn't you know it, old Richard Dawkins is changing his tune. Well, I must say, I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if... Um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we, certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Well, which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that, as we know, church attendance is plummeting. But the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do, really. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. <laughs> Richard Dawkins, the cultural Christian. Did you see that one coming? 
It shows you though, right? Everybody's seeing it, even old crusty atheists like Dick Dawkins. You just can't make it up though. I mean, this is this is this is the guy who helped blow everything apart in the first place. And I, <laughs> and now he's freaking out because all the Christian barricades and protections are gone. The, the protections between civilization and barbarism, they've been flattened. And who flattened them? Well, sophisticated atheists like Dick Dawkins. That's who. And now he's sitting out there like something out of the three amigos. Help! Bring back the Christian carols! Help! This is for real! I'm terrified! What am I doing in Mexico? They're using real bullets! Uh, this is real. You mean... Yes. They are going to kill us. <laughs> so there's that. How seriously should we take that? What am I doing in Mexico? Right? I'm just terrified, just afraid. That's Dick Dawkins. But then you have another category. You have the guy that suddenly realizes that the jig is up and said, so I was just gonna, <laughs> just gonna jump ship and pretend like he was never on the wrong side to begin with. Here's Jeff Sachs. Uh, this is a Biden project that goes back uh, 10 years now uh, will completely destroy Ukraine. Because the most basic point of this war, which is that we overthrew a government in Ukraine in 2014 that wanted neutrality so that we could push NATO enlargement, was reckless, stupid, and doomed to fail. And it failed. And now Biden is uh, just trying to hide the failure to get past November. If the Republicans uh, play into this, it's unbelievable. Shame on them. Uh, they're basically on the right side, although Biden bludgeons them every day. You'll be the one to lose Ukraine. Well, the, the truth of the matter is uh, Biden has been a disaster for Ukraine for a decade. This is a war that never should have happened. It was about NATO enlargement where the Russians said no NATO on our borders. But Biden and Obama and Hillary Clinton and Victoria Newland, Jake Sullivan, Tony Blinken, they just barged ahead. They wrecked everything. And now they want another $61 billion to get them past November. It's, it's a disgrace. It's completely a disgrace. Well, welcome to the party, Jeff. He ain't wrong. He's absolutely right. But you gotta, rem you gotta wonder if Jeffrey Sachs recalls at all what he was saying a few years ago that led up to this disastrous Biden debacle. And it is a dangerous country right now. It will be absolutely dangerous if Trump wins re-election. So I'm glad that Jeff's finally waking up, you know, and calling out the very folks who took down Donald Trump and he helped them take down Donald Trump. But where does Jeff Sachs stand on Agenda 2030, for example? I don't know. Is he done with the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, do you suppose? Goals which he himself co-authored? Doubt it? Maybe? How do we know the difference? How do we know which ones are real and then maybe trustworthy and which ones are just plain old everyday opportunists, opportunists trying to bet on the winning horse, <laughs> not wanting to, wanting to be stuck holding the bag, right? How do we do that? Well, I think the, the, the correct answer, the most expedient answer is when these people start saying things that offer them personally no prospect for upward mobility or advance or some advantage in the world, when we start seeing it, when they start saying things that can only hurt their careers and set them back, well, that's when we can be reasonably sure that the grace of God is at work and that these folks are in fact not controlled opposition, but rather they're they're, they're the recruits. They're the people that God is, in, in his mercy, is causing to wake up to join the fight. Because they really are waking up. And they don't all have to be Catholic, at least not right away, right? Eventually they'll find their way to the case of Christ, as we saw last week. But I would certainly put a man like Tucker Carlson into this category. He suddenly is waking up, and not only waking up, but apologizing for his own role in something like the, the, the invasion of Iraq, that debacle, uh, and saying he wishes he had never done it, and apologizing profusely and often for what he did, for his role, you see? These are the things you see that and you go, huh, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening, you know? And now he's doing such great work, right? 
Well, another one of those would be, and I'll close on this, would be a Candace Owens. Candace Owens, if she is controlled opposition, which I don't believe she is, let me ask you a question. Why in the world would she go out on, what do you call it now, international TV, on the internet, why would she go out and say this? You also come out against his birth control, or the yeah. pill as we call it. Mm -hmm. and what's the issue there? Everything, once you learn the history of it. So I have a show and I'm uh, smeared as an anti-vaxxer. I don't want that to be a smear, I want to embrace that. I'm against vaccines, I am against hormonal birth control. Um, you're not hurting my feelings by pointing that out. I've done the research, I've looked into the history of it. Birth control is exactly what it sounds like. They thought of it as something that needs to be propagandized to control the birth rate. It's a movement that is steeped in eugenicism. You know, the, the passing of the great race was the book that was the most well-read book in the world at that time in the progressive era, throughout the progressive era, and it was a, basically a pseudoscience and it worried about the preservation of the races and basically taught that you could train people um, not to procreate. Contraception? Are you kidding me? The left, the bad guys, they won that war decades ago, didn't they? Most Catholics have sold their souls for contraception. I don't know what the, what the, we had the number, the percentage a few weeks ago. It's a high percentage, 70, 73% of Catholics are using contraception, supposedly, according, according to one Pew research poll. Anyway, it's a lot of Catholics have given up on this because they're not being taught it anymore, right? They're not being catechized in the moral teachings of the church. Evangelical Christians on the question of contraception, I mean, they led the charge in embracing contraception way back in the 1930s at the Lambeth Conference, right? <laughs> and they haven't looked back since. You go to the people that have been critical, and I think to some extent, rightfully so, even of the pro-life movement and how the attitude is, well, just use contraception so you don't have to kill the baby. Well, this is the slippery slope. This is the beginning of the end. It all started with contraception, you see? So again, Ask yourself now, why would Candace Owens be doing this? Margaret Sanger literally wrote a piece called Birth Control Propaganda and talked about how men breed their cattle with more care than we breed humanity. And so the great thinkers of that time, always the Yale and the Harvard crowd, um, thought, thought up the eugenicist movement and birth control was created with that in mind. Um, women aren't educated about any of that when they're handed packs of birth control and they're poisoning their bodies routinely. And then when they want to have kids years later and they go, I don't know why I can't get pregnant. Well, the answer is because you've been taking a drug for decades, a drug that was created to, to stop you from procreating. Amazing. And this gets back once again to my, my little helpful hint. Candace Owens and anyone who says that has everything to lose by saying it. So why is she saying it? You know, I think part of it is spiritual. I think I, I have very much felt within my own soul and in the conversations that I've had with my husband that, I don't know, just there's this sort of awakening going on. And I think it's, we, we're just inching ever so closely to losing the world and into something that I don't, and I don't say this ironically, and I think people should be careful when you, when, when you say this and think about what you're saying when you say it's satanic. What is happening is satanic worldwide, right? It is the inversion of truth. It is... Um, again, something that used to be taught in American school systems was the Bible that got wiped away in the 70s, and that was ever intentional. Why is she saying it? And that's why last week when we saw that happening to her, where she got fired, where she was being maligned all across the spectrum, conservative Catholics, Christians, liberals, everybody, attacking her for defending the kingship of Christ, and now this week she's doing this, and she's paying the price for it. Well, what do you think? Doesn't that make that person an ally to our cause? Contraception, friends, is where the collapse of Christian society began because it's where the collapse of Christian marriage began. Divorce and contraception, right? Which one came first? Which one was more devastating to the idea of marriage, the nucleus, the family, nucleus of society? After that, separating the, the primary ends of marriage, the procreation and education of children, separating that from the pleasure of the marital act. That's what it was all about, friends. And it sounds silly now, doesn't it? Because everybody's talking about abortion and now we're on to, uh, you know, castrating children and all these things. But it's a real simple thing. What the devil wanted to do within marriage was he wanted to separate the pleasure of the act 
from the purpose of the act ordained by God, the procreation and education of children. You see, that's what was going on there, and that was the beginning of the end. That's how we got to where we are now with the marriage and the family in shambles, and society in shambles. And again, C Candace Owens is essentially standing alone out of nowhere on this once again. And, and ironically enough, standing with the same Pope, the same Pope who gave us quas primus on the social kingship of Jesus Christ, Pope Pius XI, also gave us in December of 1930, an encyclical letter called Casti Canubi, which if you're new to the movement or you're a recent convert, is going to be extremely eye-opening for you to read, to see what the church taught, initially was teaching and how far we have drifted from that. Because in 1930, Pope Pius XI, reiterating the previous teachings of all his, uh, all his predecessors, he condemns contraception, even after the entire Protestant world had caved on it at the Lambeth Conference. And it's a, it's a beautiful and it's a bittersweet thing to reflect upon that Pius XI, the Pope in Rome, even after he had lost his papal states, and stripped of his honors as far as the world is concerned, was still able to remind billion, billions of Catholics worldwide of their duty before God. And even behind the closed doors of their bedrooms, do you know what? They obeyed. And they obeyed to such an extent that there was an, uh, uh, in this country, there was a national movement to oppose the Catholic immigrants, to oppose the Catholic large families, because you know what? Politically, the Catholic family became a clear and present danger to what the plan had been for this new world order, burgeoning new world order, right? You can see why. They're having seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 kids. They're all growing up in the faith. Families are strong, kept the neighborhood strong, kept the society strong, and also influenced the vote. That's the power that one little man, one little pope over in Rome, reiterating the constant moral teaching of the church had still before the Second Vatican Council. So let's just close on this, again, with an interest, with an eye, on looking at this woman who's not even a Catholic, but in the grace of God, has reminded the world this past week of the teaching of the church and the, the route back to sanity, to a moral Christian society. This is gonna sound really foreign to you, but here's what the Catholic Church actually, based on scripture and tradition, infallibly taught Pius XI, 1930, Casti Canubi, quote, Since therefore the conjugal act is destined primarily by nature for the begetting of children, those who in exercising it deliberately frustrate its natural power and purpose sin against nature and commit a deed which is shameful and intrinsically vicious. Small wonder, says Pius XI, therefore, if Holy Writ bears witness that the divine majesty regards with greatest detestation this horrible crime and at times has punished it with death. As St. Augustine notes, intercourse even with one's legitimate wife is unlawful and wicked where the conception of the offspring is prevented. Onan, the son of Judah, did this, and the Lord killed him for it. Any use whatsoever of matrimony exercised in such a way that the act is deliberately frustrated in its natural power to generate life is an offense against the law of God and of nature, and those who indulge in such are branded with the guilt of grave sin. I'll bet there are a number of people in this audience who had never heard that. That's pretty scary stuff. Either the church for a long, long time was dead wrong, or we're in deep doo-doo. Because <laughs> we've, we've drifted so far from that. Francis blessing homosexual couples now. You see? See where it all started? So honestly, what do you think? Is Candace Owens the problem? Is Candace Owens wrong for reminding us of what our own church 
teaches and has taught for a thousand years based on the word of God himself. How can she be wrong when she's defending the infallible teachings of Holy Mother Church? Controlled opposition? <laughs> I don't think so. So once again, friends, I, 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 I see this as a, a reminder for us all. And though I've never met Candace Owens, I stand with this woman once again this week and I hold her up as this week's Exhibit A for a worldwide awakening to the truth that is happening all around us with or without Pope Francis and the Church of Accompaniment.